What's up YouTube? So today's vlog is gonna be kind of not necessarily today's vlog. It's pretty much the whole weekend and the vlog is not necessarily gonna be in chronological order, but uh, yeah, who cares? What's up YouTube? At the shop right now and I've got the little six gallon nano reef here. I'm gonna be doing some upgrades on her and uh, let's get to it. Okay, got it white balanced. So we've got uh, mainly just some softies here. I got some monopora, chalice and whatnot, but mostly zoanthids. And we're having a couple problems with this reef. Uh, the main one is we're having some cyano bacteria this stuff right here covering the rock that's bad we're also having a lot of detritus um, no matter how much I siphon this off no matter how much I change the water I can't get rid of it and there's just a massive buildup as you can see and uh, this is weekly I can clean this out and it's gonna be here next week why I don't know I'm not feeding the system anything there's no fish in there there's no shrimp no nothing just coral and uh, it's, it's a bit beyond me why this reef is doing it. So what we're going to do is we are going to first off add a Neptune Apex. Let's try that again. Okay, well we're going to be adding a Neptune Apex a reef controller so we can monitor everything that's going on in this reef. And with that we have the display and then we have a, a EV8 power brick which is uh, gonna, everything's going to be plugged in to that. We're also going to be adding a Neptune dose. What this is going to be doing is we're going to have we have two pumps. We're going to have one that is pulling water out of the system and then one that is putting water back into the system. So we're going to have an automatic water change. Third thing we're going to be doing is adding sand, live sand. Right now it's a bare bottom tank, which I really enjoy the look of a bare bottom tank. However, because we're getting this cyanobacteria, you can see it growing on the back, and this uh, massive amount of detritus, the, uh, the live rock is obviously not doing a good enough job filtering out the water. So what the live sand is going to do is going to add a massive amount of surface area to the system, which is going to allow bacteria to colonize the sand, which is why I have live sand, to speed that up a little bit and that bacteria is going to break down any nutrients that are in that tank. Okay, so you can see we got rid of most of the detritus and cyanobacteria and all of that nasty stuff. So next up we're going to be adding the sand. Okay, so about four hours later, I have the reef cleaned with a new sand bed in there. I have the apex controller hooked up. 
I am missing the temperature probe and the pH probe so I'm not going to fully set up the apex. I'm keeping the heater and the pump and the light and everything separate of the apex until I get those hooked up. Um, created a little bit of a mess here so I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, get out of here, and then finish this project tomorrow. Alright, so it's the next day and the tank is looking pretty good. The water has totally cleared up from uh, adding the sand. We uh, have some zoos opening up. We've got the monoporter over here. We've got some more zoos. Everything looks pretty happy. So, so far so good. Brought the extra temperature probe. I do not have the uh, pH probe, so we're just going to have to go with temperature, which is okay. That's fine. So let's go ahead and get this uh, temp probe hooked up to the apex. How we're going to do that is install this magnetic probe rack in the back of the tank and then add our temperature probe and then this is also going to serve to hold our tubing for the automatic water change. Okay, since I don't have a Wi-Fi module to plug this into, I'm going to have to program it the old school way uh, until I get the Wi-Fi module for it. So we're going to go to menu and then do a bunch of uh, really fun stuff. Okay, so I just realized that in order to set up this auto water change system, it's going to require quite a bit of programming. And I don't have connection to the internet for the Apex, so I can't control it from my laptop. So that means that the auto water change system is going to have to wait until I can either get an Ethernet cable or I get the Wi Fi module hooked up to the Apex. So that ends the uh, reef project here until further notice. So before I call it quits on this reef tank and uh, go home, I'm going to go ahead and go to the reef store and uh, pick up a couple of fish, maybe a shrimp for it. Let's go. Well, there we go. That was a super long drive, total of half a mile or something like that. Let's go ahead and get our fishy acclimated to the reef and get them in there. Now, as you can tell, this is a uh, rimless tank and uh, I've had some problems with fish jumping in the past. So what I've done is I've left about an inch and a half here at the top empty and uh, I will be getting a lid for it. So uh, in the meantime, I got that water level a little bit lower to prevent the fish from jumping. And then once I have that lid, we can move on to fancier fish. And we're going to have to take the light off for this bag to fit. Wow, he's adorable. 
Also, in addition to the clownfish, I got five absolutely enormous zebra snails. Thank you, Coral Cora, for the hookup. These puppies are big, and they're going to have plenty of food in the tank at home. Now, I'm really unsure if he's going to want to eat right now, uh, considering he just moved to a new home. But, you know, we'll let him make that decision, and we'll make it available for him. I'm just putting some mysis shrimp in there and let him go to town. All right, just made a home with the SCAR Go. Time to cook these babies up. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not cooking them. It's a little bit noisy in here, but I got the, uh, the zebra snails. We're actually not quite ready to add them to the tank. Um, I don't want to introduce any pests to the tank. I don't think there's any on there. There's a very low chance there will be. But considering the amount of coral and the size of the colonies I have and uh, the failures I've had in the past because of pests, I'm not going to risk it. Okay, so what I've done is I just got this bucket sitting here in the sump tank. To keep it warm. I got an air bubble in there to keep a little bit of water movement. And all I'm doing, I'll just put these guys in here. All I'm doing is I'm going to quarantine them for a couple days. I'm going to throw some uh, food in there in a minute just to make sure that I don't introduce anything in my tank. Really, the only thing I'm worried about are some monophore eating nudies or some zoe eating nudies. Uh, I really doubt there's any in there. Uh, I'm not worried about ick or marine velvet or anything like that because I don't have any fish in this tank. So that's not going to be a problem. Uh, really just, uh, like I said, the nudies, I don't want any of those in there or anything else that I don't know about. So I'm going to keep them in here for a day or so and pull them out, examine them, look at them and make sure there's nothing that uh, comes off of them in the meantime, any uh, pests. So update on the frag tank, let me uh, turn my up down. So I installed two of these Ecotech Radeon G4s. These are the, uh, the 30s, so they got the two two LED panels per light, putting out about 400 watts of light. That is uh, quite toasty if I put my hand on it. And this is uh, just running at Tinic right now. I have the camera white balance, so it comes out pretty well. Uh, I've got, right here is the Tyree Season Screenings Monopora. And again, this is absolutely massive colony. Over here I have the Jedi Mind Trick, again, massive colony of that one. I've got the Monopora Lumidata over here. And over here I have what I believe to be a Lang Se colony. Um, getting more and more convinced that this is a Lang Se as, it, as time goes on. I've got a colony of this Monopora Spine Goods if that's what you call it. And then, you know, I've got, of course, this red cap spread throughout. Um, there's a, here's another piece of that wing say. And then I've got an Idaho grape over here. Some uh, appleberry monopora. Here's another colony of the appleberry. And these are huge, huge colonies. We've got a little baby colony of the Tyree Seasons Greetings. We've got a little free pebbles monopore over here that uh, I just moved it under this light so it browned out just a little bit but she's she's coming back. And then over here I have a unknown monopora that for a good six months was browned out and now it's starting to get its green color back so I'm pretty excited. And then you can see all of this algae. It's, uh, not too much, but considering I only have maybe one, two snails, there's a snail in here. I only have two snails in here. 
So that's why I got the zebra snails to help these guys out. And then down here, this one, uh, I've got this light, I'm going to have to turn them off, but i got most of my chalices down here. I've got a couple other frags. i got zoas, some mushrooms. You can see another appleberry colony. i got another one back here and uh, another one down there. So i got tons of appleberry. Here's some frags of appleberry. I've got uh, some favia. More zoas. I got myself a scoli back here with that open brain. It's one of my favorite corals. I love that one. Got a big chalice colony back here. Okay, let's turn this flow back up. Oh, yeah. Got that max spec gyre. I think this is the 150. Just putting out an insane amount of flow. Absolutely love this pump. Possibly my favorite piece of hardware is the iPad. Completely control the reef off the iPad. Okay, well all I have are some empty cliff bar boxes and some protein powder. So I'm gonna go to Chipotle.